Here's a test of this Stereo Nagra, serial number 4882. Currently feeding it a uh, stereo signal. You can see the meters are swinging independently. We'll set them both to minus 10. We're feeding it with a tone generator over here, about 2,000 hertz right now. You can see the condition of the lid is very nice. I'm going to take the lid off and load up a tape. The uh, Turn that off. The tape is whatever the last formulation of M-Tech was. Um, I'd have to go look, but it's a fresh piece of hot tape that was very indicative of what was used um, when this Nagra was last calibrated. Now the bias is adjustable um, through the control on the front panel. Uh, it's covered with a calibration sticker right now, so I don't really feel compelled to change the bias. Plus, I've noticed it's pretty flat, so we're going to throw some real nuts on here. And we're rolling at uh, 7 IPS, 7.5 IPS, and I'll go ahead and start that tone. And as we look, we're at minus 10 E to E, and I'll go into record. And the speakers are playing back. The tone right now and then I'll throw the switch that allows the meter to read off the playback head and you'll see we've got about a minus or a plus two boost at two kilohertz and um, that's well within the range of acceptability but now we'll go up to about uh, 4200 hertz and do a playback check and we're still showing a little boost at um, off of minus 10. Um, of course that could easily be resolved uh, if you want to adjust the bias. Um, I don't believe that the playback frequency response needs to be adjusted at all. Okay, um, now we're at 10 kilohertz and now we're starting to see a little bit of common differential between E to E, which is flat line right there at minus 10, and now we're going to uh, play back off the tape head. You'll see when there's a tape dropout, the meters will fluctuate a little bit. But uh, this is a pretty well used piece of demonstration tape. And at 10, uh, 10 kilohertz, we are uh, maybe plus three. Let's go up to 15 kilohertz. So it's feeding 15 now. You and I can't hear it. Uh, certainly a YouTube video won't reproduce it. But at 7.5 IPS, this is right off the tape, the, the needles are showing playback at 15 kilohertz, which is pretty darn impressive at 7.5 IPS, uh, holding its own. Let's go up to uh, 18K. Um, the meter, uh, the tone generator is at 18K. Hit playback and notice that we're pretty much flat at 18 kilohertz. And uh, it, if I go up to 20 kilohertz, it should fall off because that's about the limit. Um, so going to 20 kilohertz right here. And we are minus 10 E to E. And when I hit the uh, playback, you'll see the fall off of about, oh, I don't know, minus 3 down at 20 kilohertz, minus 4. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, going back to an audible tone right now. Uh, 2,000 hertz and that's E to E at minus 10 and we'll see about a plus 2 bump and again that may be a function of the tape formulation it could be a function of the bias setting or if you choose to monkey with the playback response which is adjustable from the top deck um, true calibrated it and I'm probably not uh, I'm not going to touch it so we'll go to stop um, I'll test rewind um, by going into rewind, we see that it rewind action is really positive and spunky. And then we'll go back into play. And I don't know if we're going to hear anything, but the fast forward switch, as you can see from the accelerated reels, is working well. We can observe uh, the motor current on um, the motor in play. You see where that meter is reflecting at minus 15? That's just showing relative motor current. But when I go to fast forward, we'll watch it bounce. Because now the motor's drawing a lot more current at high speed. 
and then once you take it out of fast forward and it locks up again and the tachometer is showing that it's back to speed so when you bump the speed either with your finger you will see that the speed meter is showing you that we're off speed we're going to go back to level right now and we see that the um, independent inputs are unganged but with a flick of this switch they are now ganged together although they, they're still a little clutch slipping intentionally to allow you to work both of those at the same time it's playing back other tape other tones that I've recorded on other uh, demonstrations there's the head cover which uh, cuts down on um, any hums that may be present in the vicinity of the machine. And now we're going to rewind again. And we'll notice that we have a very quiet machine in rewind. A lot of them really sound cantankerous when you go into rewind. And this shows that the machine was stored properly with the, uh, with the transport unengaged. If the transport if it's stored with the transport engaged, it'll not only put a bump on the um, the idler wheel, but it will put a bump on the internal um, rubber that engages the rewind drive and usually makes it sound real, real bumpy on rewind. But this one sounds dead quiet. Beautiful machine, really nice condition. Uh, I can't believe this one has seen any location use because normally you see a, almost a little bit of melting on this rubber here because sound mixers have sunscreen on their hands and other chemicals and they touch the machine and the metal and it starts to interact with both the metal and the um, um, the rubber. But not on this one, it's really super clean. Um, we've got uh, a power supply that's included with this machine that is uh, not a standard original supply. I'm using a, a 16 volt 4 amp switch mode supply that was made by Sony and is terminated in the appropriate Tuchel connector. So it's really ready to go. Um, and again, we did that test at 7.5 IPS um, and showed some very impressive response curves for that tape speed. Imagine what it would do at 15 IPS or at the Nagra Master position. So that concludes this test of this Nagra 4S number 4822. Thank you.